Okay, everybody, uh, today's video lesson is going to be on orbital diagrams. What I'm going to try to do with these orbital diagrams is try to make a little bit of sense out of that quantum uh, mechanics stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the rules from quantum mechanics and put them into something a little bit more workable. As you've noticed so far, working with quantum mechanics has been pretty crazy. It's been pretty out there, and orbitals are even, even more abstract. All right, just to refresh your memory, um, you've had Bohr's model. You had the electrons going around in these distinct energy levels. Remember, electrons sit here. You had the nucleus in the middle. You had n equals 1, n equals 2. Well, these were the energy levels, and that's still correct. But the problem is that we can't say that the atom, the electrons are sitting in orbits because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So then Schrodinger came up with this idea of, well, where is the electron most likely going to be? So we did this plot of where electrons most likely are going to reside. And that's where we got this orbital. And that's what an orbital is. An orbital is a region in space where the electron most likely is going to be found. Okay, So we can't say for sure that the electron is in a distinct orbit, but it's located somewhere in space close to the nucleus. And as the energy level gets bigger, the distance that the electron can get gets a little bit bigger. Okay, So what we're looking at is we still see those concentric circles, in a sense, more three-dimensional spheres, but the idea is that we're looking at where electrons are. So electrons are where? They're in orbitals. That's key. The electrons are sitting in orbitals. Okay. I'm not going to expect you to get into the whole background of this, this orbital, or, you know, the, the origins of these orbitals. What we're going to do is we're going to start looking at how the electrons are placed into the orbitals. Okay. How they're replaced into these regions in space. All right, so what is an orbital diagram? An orbital diagram is a series of boxes that we're going to use to represent the orbital because this gets way too abstract, especially when we get to those crazy shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that our boxes are the orbitals, and each box is going to be able to hold electrons. Okay, and each electron is going to be represented by an arrow. Okay, so we use arrows, and I use these little half arrows that are going to equal electrons. Okay, and the orbital, the box, represents the orbital. All right, so each box can hold up to two electrons. All right, sometimes you're going to see the notation that the orbital will be a line, and you might see it like this where you got the electrons on line. So the line would be the orbital. Okay, so yeah, but bear with me. I, I will get you through this. This will make sense in a little bit. Then we're going to shift gears into the more applicable electron configuration. Th these orbital diagrams get you, they're good, but they can get a little over overbearing a little bit. Okay, so then we're going to drop the boxes and we're going to put this in a shorthand version. All right, so how do we draw orbital diagrams? How are we going to, we first we need to do is understand some rules. Here are our three rules for writing um, electron configurations, I just abbreviated configurations, and electron, oh, I'm sorry, orbital diagrams. And these three rules need to be followed whenever we are writing configurations and orbital diagrams. The first one is referred to as the Aufbau principle. What that means is that electrons fill lowest energy levels first. And once those energy levels are filled, then it goes to the next one and the next one. And remember, energy levels are broken up into sublevels. There's only one sublevel for the first energy level, there's two sublevels for the second energy level, and there's three for the third, and four for the fourth, and so on and so forth. All right. So the lowest energy is where the electron goes. That's the ground state. Remember, this is your, your ground state for the electrons. Okay? All these electrons are going to be put in their ground state. So what that means is that we fill the lowest energy first, then we go to the next energy, then we the next one. Remember, the, these lines here represent the orbitals. Okay? So each line here will get two electrons. Once we put two electrons in, we move to the next one, then to the next one, and the next one. Now what this means here, this orbital energy level overlap, well, here, if I follow the order, all right, I'm just going to write this order. Instead of going up on the chart here, I'm just going to list it from left to right. I would start with the 1s. That's my lowest energy. These are sublevels, by the way. 1s is a sublevel of the first energy level. 2s and 2p. So this is the second energy level, broken up into two sublevels, 2s and the 2p. Then we go to the third energy level, 3s, 3p. Now, you would think that the 3d would go next, but notice that that... 4s is just slightly underneath that, so we end up having what's called energy orbital overlaps. And then we do, oops, I'm sorry, then we do the 3d. Then from the 3d, we go and fill the 4p. Then from the 5p, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, say that again, from the 4p to the 5s. From the 5s, we then fill the 4d, then 5p, then we do 6s, then we do 4f. 
and then from 4f we do the 5d, then 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p. And then if you want, you can go to 8s, dot, dot, dot. So how do I know this order? Well, there's a little trick to getting this order, and I'll show you that in just a second. I don't have it memorized. Um, I wasn't looking at anything, honestly. I don't. But I'll show you the trick in just a little bit. So that's the off bell principle. I have to fill in this order. Lowest energy, lowest to highest. Okay? So lowest energy to the highest energy electrons. Pauli exclusion principle is the second one two electrons per orbital. So I can only put two electrons in each of these orbitals. I'll, I'll show you in a little bit bigger box in just a second. Okay, so electrons are gonna have, be in the same orbital, have to have opposite spins. We use an up and a down arrow. So when I put electrons into these boxes, so if I were to make that 1s uh, box bigger, oops, we'll make it a little bit bigger than that. So what I would do is I would fill this as my orbital. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put electrons in here, and the first electron, has an up spin. Second electron has a minus spin. The reason for this is that electrons have both negatively charged, so we're showing that as you put these electrons together, they're going to repel each other, and that's what this represents, this up and down spin. Don't worry too much about the, the names here. It's, it's very confusing. What you want to know is that if you put two electrons in a box, that is in orbital, remember the boxes are the orbitals, you are going to put one up and one down. That's Pauli exclusion principle, always opposite spins. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in class. Okay, but that's that's the general gist of it. Hun's rule comes into play when we get to the 2p. Okay, when we get to the 2p, what happens is we have three boxes there for the 2p. Okay, so for the 2p, what we're going to do is we're going to put electrons in each of these lines or each of these orbitals, and then we double up. So the electrons have to be half filled in each of the orbitals before they can double up in the same orbital. So this doesn't matter for the, the S's. It only starts in the P's, the D's, and the F's. I have to put one, two, three, and then I start doubling up. 